Good morning, good morning, good morning. What's up, everybody? Y'all get on in here. You're inside a thankful Thursday edition of the Faith. Oh, you want me to hold it? <clears throat> Follow me, I, ready? I going to be the choir director. You ready? Let's go. Let's do it. Here we go. I'm going to start. All right. Here we go. You ready? The Faith Room. Almost. Almost. With you like this, why you thought I was going? You thought I was going to be messy and keep going, and but I wouldn't do you like that. I, I, I was going to roll with you though. I know it. Good morning, Elder G. Sheree. What up? You got what it. Do that. What the G stand in none of your business? It stands for get you some business. <laughs> what up, Sheree? It's thirsty. It is. Somebody says. Tree says it's a thinking, thankful Thursday. Trees, why you got me thinking like that, Trees? Bianca, it's your pastor. Yeah. Let's be clear. It's a third, y'all. We made it's it's almost over, y'all. We almost here. We made it. We survived. Listen, I'm not, I'm not um we made it. Yeah, so that the weekend is here. It's, the, it's Friday Eve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like how you just went over my little, you made it. Go ahead. I'm going to let you make it. You go ahead. Because, you know, are you going to like, are you going, are you practicing to go ahead and sing at church? I'm waiting for it. Here's my question. Have you ever seen somebody off beat when you was praise and worship? You made it. They were just. The and they, they okay. be the ones that's clapping the hardest. <laughs> they have so much energy. Woo! You ain't gonna steal my fire. They say I, I, I'm not. Did I say your name? Not me. I'm speaking oh. of the people. You calm I down. I don't. I just say, Lord, help them. I'm not and here so, to fight with you today, Sheree. You know, I got I got people at my church, and I have a saying: Friends don't let friends clap on the one and three. What's okay? What is one? The offbeat. Okay, what is three? We, as African Americans, we clap on the two and four. We stop right. on the one and three. I have no see. <laughs> That's why I ain't in no choir. Oh. Yeah. You know how to clap. You got rhythm. You ain't gotta be in the choir. I know I do. Good morning, everybody. Excuse Sheree and I. <laughs> what did Pearly say? Pearly gonna rep Pastor that you did that a few Let weeks ago see. with the youth. Hopefully you were playing. Where's she at? She said I was off beat. Oh, Pearly. When? Last Sunday. What did you do? Did you dance? I was dancing with the youth, and uh, I guess my little. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, you on beat now. There you go. What happened Sunday? Nothing. It was two Sundays ago. I got up on the stage with them and just started leaning with it, rocking with it, leaning. With it. But you know, I guess I guess my lean was a little, a little off beat. It was a little clear. Uh huh. What's up, Kamal? What's up, Ruby? What's up, What's Minister up? Dennis? Angie Singleton? I'm black. Me too, Angie. Oh, through and through. I'm black. Think it through Thursday. Yeah, I got the video. Man, y'all quit with this video mess. Man, I got video on YouTube, Bianca. We clap on beat. I cringe when folks clap on beat because I this probably I play the drums. And just, you know, you know. You do everything in church, Sheree. Hmm. You did everything in no, church. No, no, that's Renee. Play. I don't play the drums. Oh, I thought you did for your dad back in the day. Nah. He never put you on drums? You never? Okay. Your brother plays nah, drums. I, no, my brother is on keys and organs and saxophone. My son plays the drums. Rodney, and, listen, y'all. Rodney, woo, he used to play for the youth, mm -hmm. chosen generation, and the y'all full gospel. Mm -hmm. Chosen, mm -hmm. everybody. He played for everybody. Yeah. So, but Rodney said he can't understand how I can play the tambourine, but I can't play the drums. And you I can't. The, oh my gosh. I would love to see you hit them tambourines, Sheree. Well, I do it every Sunday. If I start back bringing my tambourine in, because you know, for a season, I was back in the AV booth and I, every now and then, I would take it back there. But okay. 
Beverly so says she Pastor, Pastor Alexander with no shade across the uh pulpit. I sure wish somebody had their tambourine here. Mm. Boy, bring it tomorrow, Sheree. Bring one tomorrow. Let me just see. Bring my tambourine. I got yes. there in my office. I got to remember to bring one home. I'm, no, I'm gonna text you today. Bring okay. your tambourine. <laughs> I'm excited about that. My daddy Ooh. had me on drums. My mom on the organ. Then we get off and sing. We were, girl, the, the life of a PK. Oh, so this I'm telling you. But I never. Now I have cousins that you know they played the drums. Females they played the drums and everything at their parents' church. Yeah. But I didn't never. I was always singing. Sheree, guess what instrument I played in high school? I'm gonna give you two guesses. What what instrument? Right, well, so were you in were you in the band or the orchestra? The band, the march. Well, I, I was in I was in advanced band, seventh and eighth grade. What instrument? I'm gonna give you two. Wow. two. Hey, room. You yeah. Guess what? You guessed the one I played. I already, I got it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I already know. I probably already told you. Oh, you did. Okay, did you play the alto saxophone? No. Did you play the tuba? You got it. Tuba. You look like a tuba dude. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Did I say something off color? <laughs> hey. She's so messy. You got to know her. What's the, what's the problem? Okay. Nick, you see that Nick? Nick, L-M-A. L-M-A. Oh, 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 oh. Nick, Nick. Here's the thing. Nick, here's what got me, Nick. Here's what got me, Nick. That, that's why they laughing, because you know what you're doing. I, I promise to the holy God, I don't know what the problem is. Ninja. Ninja. Listen, Ninja. Rick. Okay, Richard. Come on, the husky okay. dude always played it too. Okay. That's what you're doing. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Notice, Rich, she didn't go from she didn't go from saxophone to uh. You know, I know you ain't playing no clarinet. I know you ain't playing no, no, no. But you you didn't mention trumpet. She went right to the two. I was on my way. It, and you said read. marching band. Come it's on now. Read. Use your context clues. You're messy. <laughs> no. I know you. No I ain't just meet you. You messy. That's what tuba do. If it wasn't the tuba, then I was going to go to the bass drum. <laughs> Heavy things. I know you ain't playing no flute. Listen. She said you look like a tuba dude, boy. That's the word for the day. <laughs> okay, you know so what? what did I play? Let's come from over there. What did I play in the band? You look like a clarinet. Never. Uh, Teresa said clarinet is a girl's instrument. Most of the time, I have seen a guy or two, but did I didn't play. Did you I play the tuba? I did not play. That's too heavy for me to pick up. I'm just saying, you know, tall chicks, tuba. Y'all know. I don't know. I don't know. Have I seen a girl play a tuba? I've seen a lot of girls play the tuba. And they were tall? No, I didn't play the clarinet. I didn't play the tuba. They weren't tall, but they were little hoes. Oh, that's what my mama say. She stopped. Yeah. Y'all come on in. It's a guess, Nate. Trumpet. No, but that would be dope. Trombone. No. Uh, French horn. No. Cherie. Church. She jazzy. You know. Put it with my personality now. Come on now. Snare drums. I just told you I don't play the drum. Yes, Antoinette. Saxophone. They got it. You did. All right, you did. Which saxophone did you play? Played the alto sax. I wanted to play the um, soprano saxophone, but my band director, God rest her soul, Miss Sylvia Clay, she was like, you will not play that in my band. Wow. Why not? Yeah, I want to be like Kenny G or somebody. She was like, nope. Could you play that thing, Cherie? I could. I could play. 
I was in the band all the way through middle school. And then I think I, I dropped out in the, after the 10th grade. Here's what messed me up. Ninth grade, I was going to march in the band. We It's summer. It's summer practice. You know the band, you go out there for yes. practice. One of the football coaches mm -hmm. saw me. And one of the football coaches said, what are you doing? And he said, I need, and from that day oh, on. Did play football? I was too, Cherie. He did you says, get mad at him? Did you did you call him shady? I left, I left why the band. You, why did he pick you? My size. So did you call him petty and messy? Uh, no, because at the time, I didn't have a tube in my hand. I was just running. <laughs> running well, why would you at practice? I was getting ready for back. We, you know, band members they run, they work out. That's right. In the stomach. So, so all of my friends and cousins and stuff that were in the marching band because they had y'all out there in the heat, they all lost so much weight over the summer. Absolutely. And they be throwing up too. Um. From running those sprints. Yeah, I didn't. Didn't do all right, y'all. I'm that tuba dude today, and Cherise the saxophonist today. I'm the saxophone chick. Yeah, how many live do we have while we playing? We are at two twenty. Let me share. Let me do right. my part. Two twenty, y'all. Three yeah, more minutes. Waiting start. in the back. He waiting in the wings, y'all. Come on right. in here and get us together. Uh, uh, Pastor Richard Miller is doing deliverance in the desert. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. Pastor Jamal Bryant will be coming in I August. Who else is coming? Uh, we got. Uh, Bishop yeah. Nelson, Rich. Jason Nelson. Jason um, Nelson. Uh, we're going to let everybody know how to register for deliverance. This is going to be my first deliverance in the desert, Rich. So this so is he, an annual annual conference? He's calling it the conclusion. He's He's been doing it for many years. COVID hit. This is the last one in this form. So, uh, Rich, I'm there, baby, and we're gonna push it, man. Don't be virtual. Uh, let me see what Rich said. I think it's virtual and in person. Let me see what he says. Linda said she sang in the Glee Club. Now my mom used to talk about the Glee. We didn't have that. Yeah. That's yep. old. Deliverance in the desert, y'all. Stay tuned, and uh, we're gonna support our brother Rich Miller, who's been a support to us. Oh yeah. I can't wait. It's in person only. In okay. Person, yeah. Cherie, fly on down. We may sing when it down it? here. August 25th and 26th, I think, Rich. I hope I'm saying it right. Well, let me know. That would be cool. That would be dope. It would be. So they still talking about the band. Terry Brooks will be there. Jace Bishop Nelson. Who else, Dr. Rich, you got? Uh, Terry okay. Brooks, that, he was in the faith room the other week. Faith room the other week, and he came to the uh, meetup. Twenty fifth okay. through the twenty seventh. Okay, let me let me let me look into some things since I got my traveling shoes on. D I D. D it. Hold on, I know how to get her here. Yeah, frat. I'll let her know. Thanks, frat. All right. I don't like you. The cues will be in the building. <laughs> Sean McMillan will be there, Sheree. Okay. Somebody said Terry Brooks is my pastor. Denise. Where pastor. is this? We're talking about at um, Pastor Richard Miller's church there in San Diego. Yeah. We'll, is, uh, in fact, I'll give some announcements tomorrow so oh, that see. we can push Pastor Rich's conference, man. And I want y'all to go if you can go. Let's pack it out. Let's sell it out. I know Let's how it is it. when you're trying to get registration and, you know, so we coming. Yeah. Greater life will be in the bill. And you know, uh, plane tickets is ten thousand dollars now, so I need to go on and get on this. <laughs> I gotta go into my full one K. Fly spirit girl. No. That's a holy airline spirit. No. It ain't say what can't say holy spirit. They may have tamarines on spirit. I don't know. <laughs> Put your back away. Put your back away. No, what did I did Frontier coming back home from the meetup? Oh, they talked to us so bad, Lord have mercy. But it was Vince say spirit just opened the door and dropped you off. 
But Frontier just, they tell you, they was hollering at us. They was, get in line. Do y'all know what a single file line is? I was like, oh, my God. Get off Frontier now. I was I had a great flight, but they talked to you bad. If you can get past that. You're going to spend $40 for your tickets. And $279 for one bag. And $5 for a Coke. Three dollars for some ice. Ain't no phone charger. Listen, if you go, if you go frontier, you better charge up all night long. Casual, one day hollering at us, just talking to us so bad. They did, and then when he was a black person, it was a little uh boy from somewhere else talking slick on the thing. Oh, y'all were on the flight coming back from the meetup. Mm -hmm. Them eighteen flights that got canceled. Sure but not I'm, I'm not I'm not they talked to you bad, but the flight was great. Yeah. It was a straight through flight. I didn't have to go to Denver, Colorado, and New Mexico and Russia before I got to Little Rock. I got you. Listen, Sheree, let me let you introduce our little brother today because you uh you work with Vince on a whole nother level than I have. Uh -huh. Vince has been a good brother, and uh I follow Vince. Vince has been a part of our journey for a minute, man. So mm -hmm. Uh, Y'all, please get everybody in. We're talking about mental wellness from a different perspective today, the physical body. And uh, we don't talk a lot about the physical body, but it's biblical. Uh, Third John speaks of, I would that you will prosper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even as your soul, you prosper mm -hmm. in health even uh -huh. as your soul prosper. So the Bible is filled with scriptures that deal with our physical health, all right? Our yep. physical bodies. We don't talk about it a lot, right? So that's why uh, I have invited, we've invited uh, Minister Vincent Jackson to come in. Cherie, go ahead and introduce our brother, and I'm going to keep tagging. All right, so he is in the um, faith room most days, and, and you may see us put him up on the screen in the uh, from the chat. But uh, I became acquainted with Vince probably early 2000s, maybe two. Some years ago, let me just say that. Um, for first of all, I, from church, and then um, he became um, somebody that kind of pushed me as it relates to um, physical fitness. Um, first started working out with him, had me running at the track, running bleachers, and you know, so then you'd be like, I don't like you no more. I really don't right. like. You. Right. Um, but he's a cool guy. Then he got me into the gym. Um, and so he knows what he's doing. He's a, uh, he, what is it when you compete in the weightlifting and all that? He's won so many titles in that. Um, so he knows what he's talking about. And so we thought it would be very befitting since we're talking about mental wellness, our mental wellness and our physical wellness uh, have one, yeah. they're almost one and the same. So if you're not good over here, you probably ain't going to be good over there. And so y'all help me welcome. Uh, Hold, on. Hold on. Let me bring them in the right way. All right, Sari, I need you to put some salt under my nose. I'm about to bring them in. You know how they put the, <clears throat> you got to just do this with your okay. finger. Yeah, uh -huh. put some salt under my nose. Go ahead. I'm about to lift some weights. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you like this? Do it one more time. Come on, just for Vince. Bring them in on this one. Ready? You uh, Okay, I got, I'm waiting to add. What the salt? Thing. Put it under my nose. Here. <laughs> Man, you crazy. Get your boy. <laughs> now help us welcome to the room for the first time on the screen with us. What up, Vince? Vincent. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey. I forgot hey, to say hey. of the gospel, too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What's up? Vince? Every time you did that, bro, before you did that deadlift, that was when they put, what, what, they, what was that they put under your nose, Vince? That is smelling sauce, uh, ammonia. Oh, like in case y'all, like they used to do back in the old church when folks were there. Yeah. yeah, smelling sauce. It's a respiratory stimulant. And Vince would take that thing, Sheree. Okay. Woo! Woo! Let's go hard now. Yeah, man. Man, welcome to the room, Vince. First of all, man, I'm so proud of you. I say yes. it privately and I say it publicly, man. The work that you do. One thing about you, Vince, you make moves, not announcements. 
what you said. Because every time I look up, Vince then helped another church and cooked up something else. So, bro, I appreciate what you do. And uh, like I say, man, we're in here today, Vince, all week, man. We're dealing with mental wellness. And we often lose our physical health mm -hmm. in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have to look long to know, Vince, among African-Americans, man, the leading cause of death, heart disease, hypertension, right. diabetes, and all these issues within our context, some hereditary, others happen by choices that we make, poor choices that we make, no exercise, no healthy diet. So, man, we wanted to bring you in to just have the conversation with us to, to help us uh, become more enlightened about how yes. important our physical yes. health really is. So, yes. Marie, you want to start off? I, I think uh, we just can do some Q&A, but Vince, I, I do, I guess I want to ask, what, what, is, what is your biggest concern, man, as a, as a, before you get into your points, as a, as a trainer, as a person who values the physical body, what's been your biggest concern among people now as it relates to their health? Well, for me, um, the biggest, the first, biggest, this, the first concern really is with people. We don't, uh, we don't value our money towards our health. Well, um, we'll spend our money everywhere, but our health. So the biggest thing is really, man, really taking the time to recognize either you're going to pay for your health on the front end or you're going to pay for your health on the back wow. end. Wow. But you're going to pay for it. Um, Call it up. Wow. Yeah, what we consider it is you pay for your health voluntary or involuntary. When you're paying for your health voluntary, that's you actually paying for a gym membership. That's you actually, when we all know if you go to Whole Foods versus any other place, it's a lot more expensive. Healthy. To get a salad is fifteen dollars, but you can go get a four for four. It's a lot more expensive, yeah. but it's not once you look at the back end. The back end is involuntary. That is when you're paying for doctor's visits. You're paying yeah. for medications that you have to have. Like these are not medications that you are taking by choice. This is you have to have to live to. Now we're reacting now instead of being yeah. proactive. And so that's what happens. You become very reactive versus getting on the front end, taking the time. You know, we don't find we have time for everything else and we have money for everything else. But the reality is I can get with somebody and look at your week spending just one week and show you how you can pay for a trainer. Wow. Based wow. on the money you spending on other stuff. Yes. Think about it. Um, just a regular lunch run to any fast food restaurant, you're gonna average out about twelve to fifteen dollars. So sure. you average out about twelve to fifteen dollars. Some people are doing that for breakfast, or they get their Starbucks. Mm -hmm. That's about ten dollars. So already you spent twenty five to thirty dollars. That's in one day. Yeah. Now you multiply that, you're at two hundred and ten dollars, or I mean, my math may be off, but seven times, yeah. So we're right there at, at that. So boom, every week. Every and week. And more on the weekend. Come on, Vince. Convict so now, look, I'm like, I'm like Sylvia. I, I'm exposed. I feel Yeah, exposed. so now once you look at that, you have the money. So yeah, that, so, so that, takes away, that takes away our excuse, I can't afford. Yes, you can. <clears throat> so... There you go. I mean, there's the simple things that you just and we haven't even we haven't even looked at the snacks and stuff that you're buying or anything else that you're buying or the other frivolous spending. We're just looking at your consumption. And then these things that you are consuming are actually not even good for you. So they're actually um, going in and piling on the problem that you're already not addressing. So and you're paying for that. Yes. You so you're actually paying to be detrimental. You're paying to be detrimental, and I get it. Everything is quick. You're like, well, I'm, I'm quick. It's quick. It's fast food. I can get it. I'm that's always that's on the go. It. Well, the reason why most people fail in this area is because we fail to plan. Um, you that's have to plan. I'm going to ask you to get off my feet. Look, this right before this, my wife and I, we had a call with uh, where, as you know, Nate, I've talked to you about um, 
And y'all forgive me if I say Nate or Sheree. I just have a personal relationship. Man, you um, come on. You we well, you know, church folk. Um, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but we our transition to going vegan. I, I'm not delivered yet. My wife is, but we just got off a call this morning planning our food for next week. Because that's what you have to do. You have to plan ahead. You can't um you can't just go into this health thing living by the wind. You have yeah. to really plan your meals. There are meal prep companies that will help you. And here's something that most people don't understand. Most people, if you have health insurance, your health insurance will pay for you to visit a dietitian for free. Yeah. For free. Yeah, it's, I didn't know that. It's in most plans, it's included. So when you do that, you can actually take what your dietitian gives you and send it straight to a uh, meal prep company and they will prepare your meals according to what it is that the doctor is giving you, the dietitian is giving you. And so now you're being actually proactive in planning. Um, you have to be being healthy. You have to plan it. This is not something that you just buy, just think about because there are really no healthy food, fast food options. No, and that's the thing with me. And so for me, Vince, it's almost like you nailed it. In my mind, when I'm out and about, and if I don't cook at home and plan my meal, my thing is always, well, what can I eat and drive at the same? So I can't eat a salad yep. and drive. Yep. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I got to go to Chick-fil-A. And then yep. even there, I don't pick the healthiest option because I, cool. I could pick grilled nuggets or the wrap or whatever, but I'm like, no, I'm here now. Might as well go and do it. Yeah, might as well go and do what you're going to do. Might as well go and get some fries. If you would have planned it before you left the office, you could have taken 15 minutes and eaten that meal that you had already there with you prepared. Mm -hmm. That's so good, man. This is the planning process. Uh, we have um, what they call six-pack bags where we can put all our meals for the day, all our drinks, everything that we need is in this cool bag. It has ice packages, everything in there. So you wake up that, the night before, you pack your bag, and you're good to go. Yeah. And and yeah, I, I agree. Food. So that's the thing, man. We have to really plan and think these things out because if you don't, you're only setting yourself up for failure. You know the old saying, those who um, fail to plan, plan to fail. Mm hmm so now when you're dealing, once we go back to the, um, just the, the source of this, uh, I try to call myself a historian from time to time, but when you go look at slavery, slavery did more to us on a health factor mm -hmm. than just what we think about the mental slavery aspect. Come on. Because we were given the worst of the worst food. We were given the leftover slops. That's yeah. why some of our delicacies that we love, like Chitterlings, all of these things. We were given, we were given all of these things, but they over the years they've just become detrimental to us. Think of this. Many of us are not Dang, fighting to we're not fighting to not have high blood pressure. We already have it. We're just trying to control it at this point. Because it's it's hereditary. Our mother had it, our father had it. And so now. Because we have eaten all those things for years and years, and it's become generational. I mean, look at Big Mama House. Big Mama had a, I mean, what, what's the movie? Soul Food? Soul Food. Or Big Mama, I mean, Big Mama was cooking <laughs> every Sunday. What, I mean, at some point, you got to be like, what did you expect? But you Vince, know? let me ask you this, because I've heard it said that sometimes it may not be hereditary. The hereditary thing is we keep eating like our four parents, we keep eating fat back. That's why we keep getting the, the diseases they're getting. So it may not be in our bloodline, so to speak, but it's the practices that we keep uh, yeah, it's, That's a combination of, it's a combination of the two. Okay. Um, just because even also, if you learn more information about donors, a lot of times black people can't get organs from other uh, races. Come on, because, man. Because of the different genome transformations, gene transformations that have happened throughout the years. We have different, um, and I'm, I'm not a scientist, but we have different gene types and tissue types because of these things. Mm. That's why black people suffer the most 
from um, transplants because it's harder unless black people are actually donors. That's so but good. this all goes in line with our health. That's Ooh. good, Vince. Now let me ask this, because because Vanessa say I'll marry Chitlin in a minute. Uh pray for it. <laughs> it's real. Uh, man, yeah. listen. Okay, that's my problem. I'm gonna be honest. And y'all have any questions for, for Vince, y'all type them in. I'm gonna go on and deal with it, Sheree, because my issue is it's I don't eat a lot, Vince. I used to be big. I don't eat a lot, but I eat the wrong things, man. That's my thing, man. Mm -hmm. Vince, I have withdrawals, man. If I don't have my Pepsi Cola at least almost one a day, man. I was doing a six pack of Pepsis, man. Sodas, that's my weakness, man. Then, okay, I tried to wean off sodas and go to these bubblies. What do you call them? Bubbly, sparkling bubbly. Sparkling water. Wow. Which tastes like an alka seltzer to me. So I almost want to throw up. <laughs> what are some alternatives, man? I need Vince when I'm eating, bro. I need the burp, man. I need that. <laughs> I, you know how you drink that Pepsi and you just. Uh, oh, man. Can you help me, bro? What are some alternatives? Oh, here's the reality, bro. I'm not, I'm not going to be this person that's going to come on here and tell you that you're going to transition your life. You're going to go from, man, living this just really whatever you want to eat lifestyle to now yeah. becoming transformed vegan to where, you know, you all you eat is um, the latest of fruits and vegetables. You know, that's not going to happen. Thank you, right? Thank you so much. But you have to not allow that to control you because now you become slavery to a Pepsi. You become a slave to a Pepsi. Like, I got to have it. That's become a controlling thing for you to the point that you can't function and it becomes even mental to the sense that you're like, well, I can't enjoy a meal because I got I don't have a Pepsi. Yeah. Think of that. Um, and so if we want to go religious, uh, we want to be spiritual and deep, that Pepsi has now become a God in your life because it tells you that you got to have it and when you got to have it. Oh. Oh. Realities. We over here in idolatry. Lord, help us, God. These things don't want to become, be like this, Lord. Look, these things become so tough that they literally have a grip on you. Lord, they God. literally have you saying you have to have this. It's no different. We talk about drug addiction, but actually, caffeine and sugar addiction is a thing too. It's for real. Like it's caffeine no and sugar addiction is a thing. That's how, that's how tough it is. Like, you are now in control. It's no different than a person that has to have a cigarette. Oh, Jesus. The person that has to have the alcohol. You're in the same place because you can no longer function in a space without it. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have to look at that. We have to get back in control of our, I don't need it. I want but it. when I want it, you know, you have to get back in that place. And you have to get in control of that. And it's not an easy conversation because there are certain things that we like and we love. But when we get to a place in our life where this thing has become so deafening to us, like we have to, this, I have to have this. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's, good, bro. that is a controlling feature, a controlling factor of your life. And you get, to, I think this is what I found. So I'm just on here telling on myself. I get accustomed to uh, Cause sometimes I eat and I'm not even hungry, so I'm like Nate. I I eat probably one meal a day, but I snack so much. That's the killer. So I feel like when I sit down to study, I gotta have. I, I'm addicted to the crunch. I gotta have something crunchy. I don't want no raw broccoli. I don't want no carrots. I want oh, like a potato chip. I want something crunchy. Now I will go do the um the mix the deluxe mix mixed nuts from Sam's or something like that. But I just got to have that crunch, but I'm not even hungry. And so how do we overcome that? And then, then Vincent, so when I do determine, okay, Sheree, you don't need the chips, so I don't buy all those bad snacks in my house. And then I have that craving. Then I get so angry because I ain't got nothing in this house. Keep it real, Sheree. I get so mad. 
what are you supplementing? So that is where. To so I can honest, I do the skinny pop popcorn or something. I just gotta have a crunch. <laughs> but how do I get past that? So, thing is, what you gotta do is find and supplement healthy snacks. Like literally, like the nuts. It's it's horrible. Like when you're trying because your taste buds have actually become conform to what it is that you want. Mm -hmm. Think about it. We don't know what it is that we really want. We just feel like we got to have certain things. Right. And because our body uh, craves certain things, our blood type craves certain things. That, that's why you're going to a dietitian, getting your blood work done and all that. You'll understand what you crave. And a lot of that also is because our bodies are so not fully functioning and regulated because we don't drink enough water. Mm-hmm. And so because of yeah. that, we're oh, that's good. getting off of those starches. Our body is craving those starches because we don't drink enough water. We have to have more of an intake of water so that we can actually balance out our bodies. And so I don't oh, have the water oh. issue, but I probably don't drink enough. Um, but I, I don't I don't have a problem with water. And so when I'm when I get like Nate where I want the carbonation, you know, I have the kind the in the skinny bottle. I'm not gonna be promoting nobody's. Uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. There in the long skinny bottle, but it's carbonated water. No ice. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Ice. I don't. Yeah. They're they not paying me, so I'm just saying. But anyway, that's I why. I, <laughs> I have a question, though, Vince. And y'all type yeah. in. Well, should we go and we can get the question now? Listen. Okay, y'all type your questions in. Uh, okay, I've heard a debate about this because again, I'm not a water. I'm drinking some water because you convicted me, bro. I don't go pick up water, all right? But talk about the crystal light package because I have to doctor my water up. I heard people say, it's too much in the crystal light water. Somebody so, else told me, you might as well make some Kool-Aid if you're going to do all that. Yeah, Help so you get that, sugar intake. Uh, you got to look at the sugar intake in those packages. It's not always healthy. You're saying, oh, well, I'm drinking water, but you're also consuming a lot of sugar. Um, a lot of sucrose, fruit, fructose, um, those type of sugars which are heavy, um, sugars which are hard to break down. Uh, they're hard for your body to break down, which naturally, but your body doesn't break down and doesn't waste off, it turns into fat. Uh, so those artificial sugars, they're horrible for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you might as well try, the next thing to do is try real fruit, um, fruit flavoring, to add or actually real fruit because they have the actual glasses that you can get to put the capsules it has a little canister inside of it and you actually add real fruit i mean that's one option for you uh you have to try that or do um natural lemon uh squeeze lemons different things but all those artificial sugars they're not healthy for you at all so yeah, you might right. as well go ahead and get you a soda at that point what about stevia? I don't, I really don't care for many uh, artificial sugars. We found out that they're actually harder for your body to break down because. But I thought it was. I didn't know that. I thought stevia wasn't an artificial sugar, so that's why stevia I didn't. Think isn't. Stevia isn't, but once you start to deal with like all of your sweet and lows and different things in there, yeah, it's the sweet and lows and the equals and yeah. stuff. So I tend to use stevia. But stevia is okay, but anything you're still adding sugar. A sweet. You still want to keep your sugar intake down it's not a natural uh, yeah. okay we have a question yes how do you I'm, determine not a trick. Go ahead. per not a person trick. how much water is needed per day because i've read different amounts well it's according to your body weight yeah um, now the tricky part between male and female is women naturally hold more water yes we do. Um, and that's for different bodily functions so you have to be careful there but the rule of thumb, people say, well, drink a gallon of water, which is um, right at 128 ounces. So there's an app that I love, I use, and it actually has my water intake um, out the roof. And when I actually, now y'all pray for me. That's my, that's my, uh, my downfall uh, is water intake. But there's an app that I call, I use called um, Drink Water. And it actually notifies you every hour that you need to be drinking. Wow. Or it actually, if you program your weight in, you program your weight and you program um, your age, it'll actually calculate the amount of water that you need per day. 
Is this called true. drink water? Yes. Okay. It's called drink water. But it actually sit patients every hour and it lets you know where you are. Like gives you, I don't know if y'all can y'all can see this, uh, but it gives you a little human. It shows I haven't drink, I haven't logged any water today. But it gives you a little human and it shows you where you are in relation to the amount of water that you need to drink. That's good, Vince. Okay, I'm trying to find drink water. All right. And so and also I think a lot of times people feel like you gotta drink it while you at work. It's twenty. It's within twenty four hours. So I think that's another struggle because I, you know, I've talked to some coworkers and they're like, I can't do this. But it's you don't have to drink it while you're sitting up here at work. You, well, you got twenty four hours to get it in. It's perfect. Yeah, well, here's the thing, though. Um, what you want to do is you want to have even consumption. You don't want to just water log your body. You want to try to have even consumption of your water throughout the day. Wow. Uh, and also for digestion, the day, when right? up, yeah. When you wake up in the morning, one of the best things for you to do is to drink some room temperature water. Mm -hmm. That's all I drink. Man, that's good. Any questions, y'all? Type them in. What about the? Oh, this, I think he just answered that. Yeah. Somebody said, um, uh, "Is it true you're supposed to drink a half?" Okay, yeah, we got that. I think we got that, Sylvia. Is it okay to fast for several days just drinking water and eating something light and healthy? That's a, a that's a loaded question. Is it okay? Um, yes, if your body can stand it. Um, if you're diabetic and you uh, you know you have issues, uh, you have to govern yourself according to that. Uh, I know. Yes, I have done a water fast, but I don't have any other health issues that would prohibit me That's from good, That's good, from like having any complications to that. But if you have, you know, dietary restriction or different health issues, you need to stay in line with that. A lot of things that we do just necessarily I'm I'm not a fat person, right? And what I mean by that, like Many people get so caught in the fads, diets, mm -hmm. all these different things. People pop up and it's a new diet every other week. But that diet could actually be more detrimental to your body than what you've actually been doing because it goes outside of the lines of what your body needs. Many of us never take the time to find out what our actually body needs. Right, That's right. Because your blood good. type actually dictates a lot with your, what your body needs. That's why it's important to get blood work done. Right. Blood type with this, if you need more carbs, like people like stay away from carbs. When your blood type may say you need more carbs than you need fat. There are different things in regards to your personal blood type. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I wanted to share was you, this is a personal battle. Your health is your health aligns with your your spiritual. You know, Bible says work out your own soul salvation. Yeah. Work out your own physical fitness. If That's you try, look, if you try to follow all these fads and things that you see with different people, you could kill, you could potentially be hurting yourself. Right. Take the investment and actually go in and get work done. Go and get blood work, get blood drawn, know what it is that your body, because if you're a diabetic and don't know it which there are a lot of people walking around here that, that don't go to the doctor. Men, of course, with the worst that we don't go to the doctor. Yeah. So because of that, we don't actually even know what our body is saying. We just know something is off. And so now you're trying this, what we call intermittent fasting, and you in the hospital because your body needed something and that you didn't know. Wow. And so that's why they always tell you, consult your doctor. Physician. Um, because now I will say last year, I I had I, I tried a, one of the low carb, no carb fad diets and I lost the weight. But that was just always this unsettling in my spirit because I knew it's it. it, it, it my artery is going to be clogged up sooner or later. I'm of a particular age, so I have to really be careful. Uh, you know, eating all the, the cheese and all the all this dairy. I was like, I I just didn't feel good about it. So I just kind of let it go. 
Um, and, and I'm uh, so, sure so getting in with the cheese and the dairy, what you have to also understand is the cheese and dairy actually, uh, for people that have respiratory issues, asthma, different things like that, the cheese and the dairy is not good for you because that um, dairy creates mucus. It creates mucus, absolutely. So for me, when I'm off dairy, like when my wife and I went two weeks, I had no, I had asthma. I had no issues at all. Like, no, never had it. I had to use my inhaler, anything, because I didn't have that same mucus. Mm -hmm. Went back to eating meat and we had a little get together, had some cheese dip two, three days straight. And I feel it. I feel the difference. You'll know. That's knowing your body. But because I've gotten that work done, I've gotten the testing done, I know what my body can stand and can't. Mm -hmm. That's good. Vincent, this is invaluable, bro. Yeah. Um, and here's a, we got a few questions coming back to back. Does it have to be room temp? I only like cold water. Is that okay? And somebody else has asked, is there a difference well, between cold and lukewarm? Well, it's actually better to um, drink room temperature water uh, mm -hmm. just all the way around, but I would not consume cold water all day. Uh, I mean, sometimes you just want, especially because yeah. you just want cold water, but it's better to um, to drink room temperature. Okay. Wow. What about the IV hydration water? I've been hearing a lot about that too. Is it good for you because water is a challenge for me as well? Well, I I honestly, that's really more like a, I've, I've seen it. I haven't done my research on it. Um, it's more of an electrolyte type um, mm -hmm. water, basically Gatorade with not as much sugar. Um, yes, I believe, but in my space, I drink, when I'm really needing electrolytes, I drink Pedialyte. If it's good for babies, it's going to be, that's going to be your best thing. I drink Pedialyte when I am really know that I need to hydrate. Like if I was going to go work out and like run in this heat, I'm going to drink Pedialyte. Okay. Sugar. Wow. Um, but the best thing to do uh, is try to just consume the water. And I saw a question that I wanted to address. They said, well, what if you're drinking other drinks? Uh, what about the water from that? You may be getting water, but what else are you getting? I always said other things mm. dry your body out too. So like you drinking, you drinking water, but you also just drank, you know, um, three crown of coke, but the alcohol is gonna dry you out. Understand the balance. That's why, like you know, people drink. They have they're dehydrated. That's why you're throwing up. That's why you're having a hangover. You're dehydrated. Mm. Y'all got that crown and coke. We ain't no crown. But if y'all gonna talk about my Pepsi, can we talk about your crown? <laughs> you know, that ain't why we said that. Uh, but y'all quiet. People, this twofold. You know, like I said, the working out aspect the diet is the hard part like you can get in the habit of working out you can get in the habit of going to the gym every day but this is the hard part the diet um, and another thing that i did want to make sure that i shared is people always say these things they talk about well i don't have the motivation well i don't want to be motivated well here's what i do honestly believe motivation is nothing motivation will not get you anywhere come on I rather have people that are disciplined than people that are yeah. motivated. Talk, Vince. So people that are motivated move in the moment. They move when it's a feeling, when it's an urge. Disciplined people move whenever, whether they feel like it, whether they don't, no matter oh. what, whether it's cold outside, it's hot outside. And in this space, you have to be disciplined because motivated, you know, we play sports, and they, we always talk about Big Mo, and Big Mo on your side. Right. What, what happens when you wake up that morning and you don't have the motivation? You've had a long night. Come on, bro. Discipline is what's going to get get you, keep you going. Come on, Discipline man. is what's going to go because if you're really talking about great weight loss, right? Mm -hmm. If we're talking about weight loss, weight loss for most individuals, healthy weight loss is one to two pounds per week. Per week? One to two pounds. One to two pounds. That's, yeah. that's healthy mm -hmm. weight loss. <laughs> One to two pounds. Do you know how, if you have 40 pounds or 50 pounds to lose, do you know how that's a process? So if you say that's 40 weeks, say 
you have 40 pounds to lose, one pound a week. That's 40 weeks. You, you're not motivated for 40 weeks. I don't care who you are. Mm-hmm. Find me one person that's going to stay motivated for 40 weeks. Going to the gym. And just let's, let's just give a real life scenario. You got kids to get up in the morning, get them ready for school. You got to go deal with somebody for eight hours. Then you got to turn around and find time to feed these kids, work out, whether you got a Peloton at the house, you're going to the gym for 40 weeks. Man, it's hard to stay motivated. That's and you only feel a pound. And then sometimes your body's so crazy, your body may gain six pounds. And then you mess around and lose 10. And then you like, you trying to stay motivated? You got to be disciplined. That even if I don't see it on the scale today, I'm still going because I know it's coming. That's what messes us up, cause cause Vince, we get on that scale and that bad boy. Yeah, I, I don't do it. The scale. So, my advice for anybody that's trying to lose weight: get off of the scale every day. Come on, Vince. Please. Get off of the scale every day. Matter of fact, this is what I would really like you to do: throw it away. Oh Lord. Throw it away. Because that scale will play with your mind because you also have to understand that your body fluctuates with water intake. I may go to, I may wake up and I'm around, I'm around 245. I may wake up at 245 and fluctuate to about 250 throughout the day. Mm. And that's just through water intake Mm. and different things. Uh, So you have to understand your body can fluctuate. That's why you need to have a you need to weigh yourself. If you're going to do it, say I'm weighing myself Saturday, wait four weeks, and but weigh yourself in that the morning on that Saturday four weeks. Like because, before you eat? Yes, weigh yourself that morning. Like mm-hmm. most people, you should weigh your, your true weight is when you wake up in the morning. When you wake up. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah that, that scale, man, it will have you so scatterbrained. It will mess you up to a point that yes. you will literally just give up. You're like, man, there's no point. Yeah. But real true weight loss takes time. Most people I see that lose this weight, and I apologize if this offends anybody, most people I see lose weight really quickly, typically gain it back in more. Yes. In a lot of time than it took them to lose it. You pointing at yourself, Sheree? Yes. So when I stop that, that diet, that low-carb diet, it just came back because I didn't have the – the plan and I wasn't disciplined, and so he compressed and said process, and that's the word process. Yeah. Yeah. So it takes time, the process, absolutely. So when you you create these diets where you can lose 10 pounds in a week, and you better get scared. Yeah, something right. So here's what you true weight loss is a journey, mm. true fitness oh. is a lifestyle, not a, it's a lifestyle, it is no different. That it's a your fitness and your health journey is literally parallel to your your spiritual journey. Mm-hmm. You're gonna go and you're gonna be on fire. Woo, Holy Ghost, Hallelujah! But then life gonna hit you, and you church ain't gonna be as important anymore. Praying ain't gonna be as important anymore. What is the same thing that happens in the fitness? You gonna go to the gym. You are gonna buy the gym clothes. You are gonna be ready to go, and then life is gonna hit you. Yeah, life, life is going to hit you. Then you'll be like, "Well, mm-hmm. uh, I don't feel like it today." Or I stayed up last night watching my show, so I ain't gonna get the gym. Sleep in. I'm sleeping. Yeah, that's all it takes. Okay. But you stay, stay consistent. Stay consistent. You know. Um, so when you look at that, think of this: if it takes you six months to lose the weight, it's going to take you another six months. To learn how to maintain it. Mm. To maintain the weight loss. Exactly. To maintain it, right. Because now, this is a science. This is not a, I can't tell you do this, do this, and it's going to happen. It's a science. Mm. It's trial and error. If you did this to lose the weight, but now you're saying I'm here, now there's an adjustment that has to be made on your intake and your dietary restriction to maintain it because you no longer want to lose. So to find that balance, it's going to be a little trial and error. Now you have to learn how to maintain that weight. So, Vincent, what do you say? And I, we got a question here. 
But like for me, I remember a time and I've had multiple times in my life when I was so this I was disciplined, I was going hard in the pain. Like I was the poster child. You remember I was the poster child for eating healthy and exercising and and life happened and then I fell off. So I like now I'm trying to get myself back to that mindset. How do I do that? So like I'll go to the store, I'll be in the moment. I'll talk myself and I'll go and buy all these groceries. I'm talking about like go to Sam's and it's just for me, but I'll go get by all this kale, all this spinach, all of this protein, all these fruit and vegetables, and then <laughs> end up throwing half of it away. Cause by the time I get home, I won't stop at Chick-fil-A. That's it. Doc. No, I just, I was like, yeah, the truth, I doc. Myself, I'm going to fix all these smoothies. Cause I remember, <laughs> When I was motivated, that's what I was doing, and blah blah blah. Come on, Sheree. Here so it I is. Got all these fruits and vegetables. So, Elder, you got pastor, right? I do. That pastor, when you fall out of line, holds you accountable. You can go to that pastor and, and say, "Hey, this is where I am right now." You're transparent with it. Who do you have in this space? As far as health and fitness, exactly. Who do you Ooh, have? That's a question, Vince. Nobody no more. I don't. I have exactly. a trainer, but I don't know. So, you have no one that is there to hold you accountable. You yeah. have no one that is there that is going to say, hey, we need to get it together. We have to surround ourselves in no matter what phase it is, whether it's business, whether it's religion, it's spirituality, it's fitness, whatever the phase is in our life, we have to have some people around us that's going to tell you, hey, get in line. Get hey, you're you're falling away. Get back here. You need to have accountability partners that you and not just somebody that's going to be passive with you. Somebody's gonna say, Hey, you tripping, fall back in line. You know, that's what you need. You need to have some somebody that's that y'all hold each other accountable, a group, whatever it is that y'all truly hold each other accountable. Like, hey, somebody that you respect. Mm -hmm. that you know is not going to be a yes person. Someone is not going to yeah. just, all right, girl, you'll get it tomorrow. No, somebody's going to, at some point, when they see you really off, they're going to do this. Hey, come on, you ready? I'm here. It's 5 o'clock. Let's go. Right. That's what you need. You need an accountability partner in every place in your life. Or mentors. You need these type of people in your life. Um, if you don't have it, you are not going to set yourself up to win. Mm -mm. Listen, what are the, your thoughts about drinking alkaline water created by that machine versus acidic bottled waters? Acid, did I say that right, Sheree? Yeah. Acidic yeah, bottled water. Yeah, so I'll be honest with you. I have not got on the alkaline bag yet. Um, that is something that I have not jumped into myself personally. I have um, a lot of friends that they believe by alcohol yeah. water. <laughs> I have not personally. So I would not be, you know, and I'm cool saying I'm not the person to answer that for you. Yeah. Because I, I, that's just something I have not dove into. I haven't got I love you, bro. Keep it 100. Now I'm going to ask you this before that question. Vince, do you think that water really be coming from the Alps? Child. Listen. Or is that, come on, bro. I I, is it really from the? How do we know it's from the Alps? Doc? We really don't know, man. I think it's good, good branding. You know, it it's sounds. Like, they put it on the bottle. This app, this app water. Look, man. This I man. don't believe it. If I can see it come out of it, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Oh Jesus! Okay, yeah. here's a question. What do you suggest for someone who has thyroid issues such as myself? It's hard for me to keep the weight off. I get so far, but then it rushes back like a mighty wave. Okay, so um, that's good. I've seen a lot of people with thyroid issues. Uh, I would ask, have you really consulted a nutritionist mm -hmm. uh, to really understand how your thyroid interacts with your body, your personal versus your blood type versus your intake? That is so... Once you're really dealing, that's why they say, you know, as we said earlier, consult with a physician. Yeah. You really need to get a team. Um, 
because you're dealing with something that is, you know, really medical. So you really need a team that can deal with both dietary, nutrition, and the health issue that you're actually facing. That is something I wouldn't just go to your, you know, it's, it's not hard to get a, uh, I have a degree, but it's not hard to get a physical, like a personal trainer certification, no offense, but it's, it's not a lot of, then those people a lot of times don't have dietary background. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good, boy. Mm -hmm. So you need somebody that has a balance because of what you're dealing with. That's good. Like, yeah. You really want to, and like I said, a lot of your insurance, check your insurance. I, I ask everybody today to call know. and check on your insurance and see what all your insurance will cover as far as dietary and nutrition. Because those are actually fall under some of your uh, regular checkups. I'm going today. Here's the question. You actually start. You can actually save money on your insurance when you go through those checks and you find that stuff out too. With some of your insurance, That's because good. you you can get a credit because you're being proactive. That's so good. I want to ask this, Vanessa. Asked that. I think this is a good point. What trips a lot of people up, so many varying opinions when you're trying to get a trainer, Vince. How do you recommend us picking a trainer? Because, man, some trainers, I'm going to be honest, man. I, I Number one, looking at their body. One more. That's one. I can, can I do one more, Cherie? And there's <laughs> really no motivation. It's just how do you help? What what are you, Vince Jackson? You the man. But if you were looking for a trainer, what are some things Vince would look for in a per somebody you're going to give your money to, man? Mm -hmm. So my tra I have a trainer, uh, first of all. I have a trainer. Uh, and I want to say this so I can preference what I'm saying. I'm a two-time national champion powerlifter, one-time world champion powerlifter, collegiate, co collegiate two-sport athlete. So knowledge is going to be the first thing. I've been there. So for me, I want to see your body of work. Show me what you have done, who you have trained, the results you have gotten. That's good. I need that's what I need to see. I need to have a conversation. I need to know that your knowledge. Yeah, okay. Right. Where did you get your certification? Come on, Doc. How long have you been in this? Have you worked with anyone that deals with what I deal with? Mm -hmm. Have you worked with anyone that, because if all your clients are stay-at-home moms that got um, time during the day, the kids at daycare and they got time, well, have you dealt with somebody that's working on the schedule that I'm working on? Have you dealt? So there's a, for me, it's a vetting process of knowledge, time, and experience. I wouldn't necessarily, now I look at trainers for what they look like, because, I mean, if you don't look like you, right, your stomach can't be big as mine. Look, but that's not the end all be all because it's, some people that are very knowledgeable uh, in that. But one thing that I will be, don't let that fool you either because there are certain people that know how to get themselves together but can't do it for others. Come on here, Vince. That makes sense. I, I know what he's saying. Right. Not, well, yeah, I see it, you know, Doc. Like my wife and I, we can't go to the gym together. Like we go, we can't work out together. It's gonna be a real bad problem when we get home because I'm in a different mindset than she is. It just don't work. Like it don't work. We're not gonna like. I want to be married. Like I really do. Look, I tell my wife, this is a trainer in the gym. I'll be like, hey, he's good. Like, hey, come here, train my wife, because we're gonna have a problem just because of my mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And. She, she didn't understand it at first, but I'm different. She's at a level I'm used to working with high athletes. Uh, I mean, that was days I believe you, Elder, you didn't want to always say bless you to me, you know? No, I didn't like you sometimes. I mean, and I understand that. But when I got to come home to it, it's a different story, right? Absolutely. Like, so, you know, she it's dinner time and she cooking my food still looking like I'm mad at what you did in the <laughs> You got to get somebody that's knowledgeable, but also understands your current situation. Someone that is very motivating, but again, even if they aren't motivating, 
<clears throat> you have that's to have discipline. discipline. That's the part. Like I, if they don't get up and turn flips and run around and and whoo, you hear today? If they keep showing up and they're accountable, that should be enough. If they're holding you accountable, because you have to have nobody. I don't care who you are; it's going to transform your life if you have not made up in your mind to transform your life. Mm. Here's the reality. Think of this: uh, we just um, we just had Easter uh, a few weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't conquer the cross because he was on the cross. He conquered the cross because he made up his mind in Gethsemane. So that's what you're gonna do today. Come on, Ben. So, so the reality you, is, if you're going to do it, you do more than you do with a that you already made up your mind that you're going to do it. If you're going to lose 40 pounds, it comes with the thought that no matter what it takes, uh, you lose this 40 pounds, on. I've already made it up in my mind that I'm going to do it. So when I get to this gym and this day is not the day that I really want, I, this day is not the day that I'm having, I've already made up my mind. So it don't matter what you put in front of me, what your trainer said, I made up in my own mind. Mm. That this is what I'm gonna do, and so that's the reality. It has to come with you making up your mind well before it started. You have to wake up every morning with that's your mind made up that I'm going to conquer whatever it is that is in front of me. On that's how you end the day. So, Vincent, real quick, can you just talk about? Because somebody want to know, somebody like me, I don't have time right now to go to the gym. How do I get started? Okay, so you, cool. you don't have time to get started. So the first thing that I would recommend for somebody um, that does not have time, there are a lot of at-home workouts that you can do. And actually, now that you have YouTube and you have smart TVs, uh, there are a lot of workouts that you can you can get. Now, um, a lot of trainers have transitioned to virtual spaces where they have actual virtual uh, programs that you can work from home. But there are certain things that you can do. You have different things, items in your house that you can use. Just squatting from the couch. Um, there's a thing called from the couch um, where you can actually squat from the couch, standing up, work out different ways like that. If you have a little finance and you can do this, one of the great things that we invested in was a Peloton. I, you know, those things. And they have such a wide variety. If you get the plus, they have workout plans that you can do, not just riding a bike. Uh, my wife loves it. it. I'm in her office right now, and her peloton is literally right here. Um, I've gotten on it twice. I pray for my strength in the Lord. Um, I'm not a big cardio person, but those are really, really, really great. Um, if you want to advance past that and you actually want to go out, I recommend for women that are just getting started, group exercises, Zumba, um, different group things. Think about this, $10 a month for a lot of these gyms, especially around here local. You got like 10, 50, you can go to all these classes. I mean, you a lot of gyms, you $20, $30 a month. Yeah. But you can go to these group classes. You don't feel awkward. You, it's a lot of women in there that's just like you. And yeah. that would actually help you because that can start to be your inner workout circle. Yeah, that's right. That can start to be your accountability group. Those group of women, y'all show up and everybody in the same thing. Girl, I, look, I'm trying to snap back. I done had these kids and you know, I'd have had this baby weight for uh, little man eight, and I'd have had this baby weight. All right, baby weight. How old is your baby? 25. <laughs> but yeah, so, like that, you know, and that's where you can build a community. You can you can build a community. And I saw somebody, and you know, I don't be afraid of the weights. Resistance is going to change your body way more um, mm -hmm. than less cardio. So you want to add the, um, and see, now they have like these pump classes and all these classes, like in your most, most of your gyms, um, they have like, classes that include weights and resistance. So um, you want to implement those things and that's a good starting place before you graduate from that to the um, to the weight room. But get active. Yeah. You live in a good neighborhood, walk. Whatever it is, you just have to start getting active and gradually um, expand from there. If you go to the class, then a lot of the gyms also have with a, a free assessment with a trainer. So you get, when you enroll, you get a free um, assessment. And you'd be surprised, um, you know, I'm not promoting this, but a lot of those trainers, they don't make a lot of money. So if you come in there a few times a week and, you know, you give them a few dollars, they'll send you through a couple complimentary workout because they don't make a lot of money in those commercial gyms. I, I managed the commercial gym for a while, so I know. Uh, but those are just a gradual transition. Um, 
Uh, so I want to address this. Someone said you need cardio to lose weight. That is not true. Building lean muscle will actually help you with fat loss because there's a difference between uh, weight loss and fat loss. Come on and help me, Doc. Like weight loss and fat loss is two different things. Weight loss just is a number on the scale. Fat loss is where your body fat, uh, your your body fat actually drops. Uh, you can actually lose weight but not lose fat. Your body fat can still be yeah. up. But you can actually gain weight, gain lean muscle, but lose body fat. And don't be moved by what they call the BMI. By BMI, I said it about, like, like I said, about 245. Uh, I think the last time we tested, I was like 15% body fat, right? But by BMI, I'm obese. Um, yes. So BMI actually does not tell me. Thank, Thank you, Vince. Right. BMI does not more obese. especially for I'm more. black people. Black people have we carry more muscle tone. Um, I referred to earlier slavery. There's a reason. Um, if you do your study of slavery, right, there were three groups before African Americans, before black people that they attempted. There were slaves from that they brought over. There were also Indians, and there was another group that they brought over. But our bodies were to withstand what others couldn't, and so because of that, we have more muscle tone. Just look at the look at your sports world, look at your NBA, look at your NFL. They're black people. Yeah, our bodies are different. Uh, so this has been been great been information, good, y'all. y'all. This is so good. Uh, we got so many other questions, and I don't know. Um, we just, we got, just couldn't yeah. get to all of them. But if you can do this in 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 ten words, somebody and I think we need to address this. Somebody wants to know what do you recommend for ladies with mobility issues? Like they may not be able to walk or move around, but they still need to drop weight or be healthy. If you can answer that real quick. So it really depends on the mobility uh, issue, but a lot of your gyms actually have. Uh, where they have stations for um, different people. They have the the hand bikes. Uh, They have the different stations for people with any form of mobility or um, disabilities in that. Uh, So that's, you can go to most gyms, most of your commercial gyms, they have different things like that. But you can also get bands, um, resistance bands. uh, Uh, Like I said, this is my wife's uh, workout room. So, we got weights in here. She has her little weights. Um, different things, just simple. Sitting, I'm working out here. I can work. I can work my arms, my shoulders, all of that in here. Um, like I said, I'm just grabbing my wife's stuff right here. This is a resistance band, so different things, just like this. This actually goes on your hips, so you can actually do your hips and your um, abductors. But you have different things like that that you can use, and they have the different. Yeah, eat right. Yeah, and you gotta eat right. That's gonna be the biggest thing. So. That's what I would uh, recommend. Okay. What about sitting in a sauna, bucket naked? Did that drop weight in a sauna? Water. Steam room. Water. Like nothing Guess on. What? Guess what's going to happen? You're going to gain it all back. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Somebody asked that. Yeah, you're gonna, it's just water. It's a detoxifier, but it's still water. And as soon as you drink the water, the weight's going to come back. Okay. This has you been know, this great, has been y'all. Good. This has been great information. I want to get Vince a salad today. Can we can we have him to so let me get my brother a salad? He ain't, <laughs> he ain't going to Chick-fil-A like you, Sheree. Okay. Win some, you lose some. You know what? I'm gonna I gotta, I gotta, you huh? I'm gonna motivate you. I for real. That that who are you accountable to? That's 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 sitting on me right now. Listen, y'all. This was you would have had to go to a conference, get you a hotel, but what yeah. this brother gave today. Took out of his schedule to be here. If you want to be a blessing, type in the comments. Uh, Vince J. Vince Jackson. However you want to do it. Everything you sow will go directly to him today. I have uh, my team to send it today. And uh, it's all good. Vince, man, I love you. And one of the things I like about Vince, Cherie, is that when he don't know, <laughs> he ain't trying to force it. filibuster and making up stuff. That man, stay that way, Vince. That is what we need, man. Uh, stay that way, and uh, we're gonna sow today. I know I'm sowing personally, man, because yes. I've been empowered. 
I just want to go work out now, Sheree. You you down? I'm down. You see, I'm dressed. So listen, I already listened. I got up this morning. I made me I'm in the moment. In the moment, y'all pray for me. I done made my cabbage today. And I might go buy me a piece of uh chicken breast or something. Or I might just eat the cabbage. I done cut up my fruit. I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to if roll. Just eat, if you just eating cabbage today, I need a co-host tomorrow. Why? I like cabbage. You'll get that on your way home. If she just <laughs> eat cabbage. Oh. <laughs> Vince, are you free in the morning? Man, I'm, I'm free. I'm free. Just stay no, on, wait, on standby, wait. bro. Real she just real eat cabbage. Real talk. <laughs> Can we, everybody in here, let's do some kind of accountability. I don't know if y'all want to form some kind of groups. I don't know. We need to do something in the faith room. Hold each other accountable if you're ready to do this. Uh, well, but I mean, in, in addition to your trainer or whatever, I'm just saying as a family, let's do something. Those who are kind of serious about in, increasing or improving our eating habits. Let's, let's talk about it tomorrow because I I think a walking challenge. Vince can maybe give us some suggestions. Okay. Walking uh, challenge. Really, 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 anything that you do, again, start where you are. If you give me a walking challenge, that's not that's not anything I'm failing myself, right? So it's to each one's ability. It's to each one's yeah. capability. Yeah. So just, um, I think, man, just really a collective group of people saying, hey, exercising, we're going to dedicate a certain – number of uh, times a week to, you know, I think three to four is like the average. Um, 30 minutes, three to four times a week to working out, doing something physically um, to yeah. increase the physical, uh, physical fitness. So there's some, but somebody in the faith room, they got a jump rope challenge. Bianca does that. I Ooh. believe it or not, I have a walking group. It's called Faith Walkers. And y'all can find us on, um, on Facebook. So what faith we do Walkers. is in there, Whenever we go and walk or run, we always, po it's just like being accountable. Somebody to motivate you, be accountable to. We post what we do for the day. And, you know, just somebody say, you got this girl or whatever. So y'all look up the Faith Walkers on Facebook. Yeah. Vanessa, you're right. Greater life, get ready. In fact, come with your gym clothes Sunday. We running around the church after service. <laughs> hey, I count my praise as cardio. Hey, now you go. go, you go girl. Oh, hey, and can I add this? Um, there's a couple of things that I want to get um, tracking. Um, if you are digital or technical, you can get things like My Fitness Pal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if not, just get your notebook and write down, start to write down everything you eat, everything that you consume, and what you do. And then you'll have something that when you do take this to your um, trainer or you take this to your nutritionist. Nutritionist, you will have something to start on and have something to go on. Um, keeping records is very big in this space. Like yeah. you want to keep your record of what you did and what you consumed, so you know how to adjust. Because this is a science. This isn't an absolute. You want to be able to, okay, this week I did this, and these are the results I had. So I have, you know, that. And you can also track your food in my fitness pile too. Right. And it's been good, y'all. So so into my brother today. Um, dollar there sign paper one, Vince Jackson, Vince, however you want to put it in there, everything. Tomorrow we have Alana Johnson coming in, licensed uh, therapist will be in, kind of do a Q and A uh, with us. Vince, everybody's thanking you, man, for the job you did today. Yeah, a lot of people. Somebody said they needed this 15 years ago. Uh, Charles Gooden said he needed this 15 years ago. Uh, Rich Miller said thank you. Also, tomorrow, I'll give you some information on how to register for DID. I want to support my brother. The conclusion, after years of doing this deliverance in the desert, God is shifting him to do some other things. So I want to make Pastor Rich's last DID, uh, as God has led him in this context, to be a major sellout, y'all. So I want to get behind my brother. So I have more information about that. Tomorrow, we will also share the gas giveaway. Yes. We're going to have a meeting today. Y'all, we're going to give over $1,000 in free gas mm -hmm. from coast to coast. So thank you for your seeds that you sown there. We're going to take pictures and capture the moment, not to brag, but to show you yeah. where you're from. Accountability. Yeah. Accountability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so y'all know Sheree and I don't handle this money. We are accountable uh, and we do this so that you can trust us uh, as we walk in integrity. So Vince, 
I love you. The best is yet to come, man. Um, Got to get Vince to San Diego and uh, just to bring you out, man, to chill. It's beautiful, Vince. It's expensive. You're going to want to go back home, but it's nice. You'll like the beach. Right? So, uh, I, I got to come by myself. I can't take my wife because she's expensive. <laughs> She'll have you in L.A., man. We on Rodeo Drive, Pastor. Listen, you, know, you, know, LA. you know, so, man, you want you want to pray for us, Vince, man. We're going to have a great day, Faith Room. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Alana Johnson will be in. She's been in before. Licensed therapist. Bring yes. your questions. It's been a great day. Um, Vince, pray for us, man, and we're going to get, get out of here. Thank you all. Um, do grace in heaven, the Father. Lord, First and foremost, we say thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this space, God. Thank you for the faith room. Yes. Now, as we go into our endeavors, God, we pray that you will allow us to not just walk out, God, but take the knowledge that we have gained and take yes. it with us, God, that we may better ourselves, better others, and better our community, God. God, we pray that you would give us the wisdom, God, to not just sit where we are, God, but seek help from those who you have informed and you have yes. equipped, help God, us. that you will allow us to be accountable, God, that, that we may seek wisdom and we say, may seek mentorship, God, that we may be the best that we can be, God. Yes. The yes. better we are, the better we can do ministry in your name. Yes. God, as we go further in this day, God, everything that we get ready to walk in is blessed. Every place that we go is blessed. Thank and you. everyone that we come in contact with is blessed. They sing a daughter, son, Jesus, and we pray. Thank God and amen. Amen. All right, y'all. You're muted, Nate. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>